Hello everybody and welcome to Getting APIs to Work. Today we'll talk about how to get better APIs with Conway's Law. And joining us for this is Mike Amundsen. Hey Mike, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Things are going fine. Good to see you again and nice to talk about Conway. Yes, yes, I'm looking forward to that as well. I think we both have quoted Conway's Law a lot. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. So let's start with what it is. What? How? How do you say it's it's phrased when you talk about Conway's law? You know, uh, his paper is pretty dense. I use the phrase "communication dictates design." The way the organization communicates amongst itself is really the design you're going to get. So uh, no matter what you do, it's an inescapable uh, condition. Uh, I think the phrase we've talked about, Conway's Law, will get you. It will catch up to you. It will find you. <laughs> um, so the way you communicate and the way you establish your communication, what you negotiate and so on and so forth, that's the design that you get. And I think we've seen that in, in lots and lots of examples, right? I think I think you've seen something like that, right? Yes, I think you can see that in many places. And and I think this is because we are talking about API specifically, right? It's 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 so interesting and I think... That's the reason why so many people talk about Conway's Law, because it's about communication, like you say, and APIs are about communication as well. So there's kind of a pretty close relationship between those two. Now, let's jump into it by first discussing a little bit why APIs are even something that people are interested in and maybe why you could look at what Conway's Law then has as implications. So, my main story around APIs typically is that I tell people, look, if, if you just look at APIs as a technical mechanism, it's not that interesting. They have been around for literally, I think, 60 years now. So yeah. it's, really, it's yeah. not that exciting. But why things are exciting around APIs is because people want to have what I nowadays sometimes call micro products. So small products or digital building blocks, right? Like small things that are reusable so that your organization can change faster, build new things faster, rearrange things faster, right? So you, you don't just want to use APIs, you want to use APIs for these building blocks, for these micro products to make your organization more changeable. That's my right. main story around APIs. Changeable, okay. We, we might say agile, right? To make it more yeah, oh, but changeable, don't... I like. Can't, can't <laughs> Let's say changeable. Agile changeable. always, that's, that's uh, a, whole nother like thing. a snake pit. So, yeah. But I like, I like this idea of micro products. Uh, I, I typically, I would say micro services. Why are you saying products instead of services or what or, or in this case? It's a term that I stole from a recent <laughs> tweet. It was not my idea, but I, but I loved that term because and, and the tweet was something along the lines of the secret is not microservices, the secret is micro products. And I, yeah. I really like that because it yeah. specifically said, look, people, it's not that important that you obsess about containers and Kubernetes and, and all of that stuff. Yeah. What's important is what you're doing with it. Right. And I think yeah. like the, the term micro products in my mind really takes us away a little bit from this tech focus and, and really re-centers us a little bit on, on this idea of we want digital building blocks. We want things that can be reused, recombined, and, and that is what we're after. Which is I like that. Yeah. The important that's part cool. for me. Yeah, that's that's cool. I like that. So so, so how do we, we want those we things? Get, yeah. Yes, how do we get there? Or what might get in the way of getting there? And I think this is where we can first look at Conway's law and and talk a little bit about the things that we sometimes see happening in organizations that say, yes, I'm, I'm buying this digital building block thing, I'm buying this micro products thing, whatever, right? Like this is what I want. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then they try to do it and it doesn't work so well. And I think this is where, like you said, right? Conway's will always get you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, the, we've talked about, you know, Conway's law is very popular with this microservice group, right? With this group of people. And I think it's because, you know, it's it's a it's a paper written by an engineer. It's a paper that talks about sort of the engineering aspects of it. But what I find fascinating is there are so many social aspects. He's really talking the, the title of the paper is how do committees invent? Right. And he meant it not just from a computer standpoint, but from, from laws. And he said he was like he had the United Nations in mind and how when people get together, how do things behave? 
and I think that's where all the all the other stuff that we touch on, like Brooks Law, you know, um, adding man, uh, you know, people power to a late project makes it later, and Dunbar's law about, um, you know, we all, can only keep so many things in our head at one time, uh, and it slows things down. I mean, there are all sorts of things that that sort of lead in this same space. So, the way Conway talked about this was it was inevitable, right? It was like you you're going to have to deal with this and you can't you can't sort of fudge it is kind of the message i get from him but that sort of flies in the face i think of a lot of ways that i hear people talk about conway's law and it's sort of like um i can use conway's law to change something and i'm really wondering if what we're really doing is just sort of acknowledging conway's law uh when we change something do you know what i mean I, yes, that's, I think, the interesting part for me. So actually, the way that I phrase it typically is not so much about communication. The way I phrase it is mostly around um, organizational structure. So ah. my, my version of it is to say the, the structure of the organization that is designing something will end up being the structure of what is being designed, right? Which, which is then in the end, of course, it, 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 it has like the communication paths in it. That's kind of what the structure of an organization is essentially is but yeah but yeah. What, what you just said i think is the interesting part right so if you buy into this and and you don't have to but if you think that there is some, some truth to it and i think there's a lot of evidence that this is what happens right you have these giant engineering teams that then build like these giant convoluted monoliths with thousands of dependencies that are impossible to ever untangle and and, and we see that a lot and 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 if you buy into this then you can say, OK, as long as I'm organized in this highly interdependent way with a lot of dependencies and a lot of communication paths, I will end up building something that looks like that. And there's yeah. no way around it. Right. Even if right. I say I want to build micro products and digital building blocks, you won't. Right. So yeah. how do we how do we fix this? Well, that's the that's where the phrase the reverse Conway comes into play, right? The notion that uh, because because the way I was talking about it is communication dictates design, and the way you're talking about it is organizational structure structure uh, dictates design or affects design. So then people are saying, well, then let's when instead of starting by designing the system, let's design the teams, let's design the people, let's focus on the organizational structure first. That's kind of like the reverse part of it, right? So I think we've, we've seen some pretty good evidence that that people do that, right? They say, well, you know, it's the old, uh, I don't know if you, Eric S. Raymond, like the, the hacker's guide, the, um, the, he used to have this thing where, you know, if you have four groups working on a compiler, you're gonna get a four pass compiler, right? <laughs> it was like, he was yes. from the old compiler days from the 70s and 80s, but he sort of acknowledged that same idea. So now, let's put together the teams we want, right? Not so much the teams we want. I would say let's put together the structure we want, right? Okay. And then, of course, then the structure be, is represented by teams. But I think the, the, the deep thing here is that you say, I want to have like the structure of many independent parts. So this is how I need to structure my organization, which then will create a team structure. And then I will get what I want to get. And that is kind of the, the reverse part. But one thing that I think we, we have to tell in, in this podcast, right, is that um, Mel doesn't like it being called reverse. So. Right, because Mel thinks it's just Conway's law. I mean, it's just right? Conway's law. Yeah, yeah it's yeah, just. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's not, it's not, the it's not the other way around. It's still that, de that dependency that you have, right? Like the, the, right. the organization that has the structure will create a system that has that structure and you're just using that law in a different way. But anyway, yeah. um, yeah. no, I agree, now I agree this is kind of a, yeah. yeah. And this is a cute idea, I think. And you see that I think happening in practice a lot with large organizations, particularly doing agile or whatever they call it, but like changing their way of how they're organized. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then the question is, is that all you need to do? You know, you just do that and then you lean back and say, well, you know, mission accomplished. Done. <laughs> Done. Um, 
but there, I think there are good examples of where it worked. And I know that, that you know of one example where this kind of strategy of kind of what you would say hacking, not so much hacking maybe, but let's call it hacking the organizational structure has been applied yep. in, a, in a rather um, drastic way, so to speak, but it has created pretty impressive results. Right. We've actually done another whole podcast on this, and that is the Jeff Bezos mandate, right? I think when you really kind of dig into it, as we were talking earlier, um, Jeff Bezos whole, you know, the, the Yegi rant, the whole myth around what, what Bezos told people they ought to do, to me, smacks a lot of acknowledging Conway's law. Like a good example would be that we're going to have two pizza teams. That's this, uh, this this story that he has that basically, you know, any team that can't be fed by two pizzas is too t too big a team. We're going to keep the team small so that that communication structure, use the Brooks Law about like you know communicating with parties, then uh, that communication structure is is a little bit more limited. And then of course the other big one uh, that uh, often we talk about is you can only communicate with another team. Bezos said through the API. Right. And there you go. So all of a sudden you're sort of narrowing the communication structure. You know, Bezos hates teams, hates meetings and all this other kind of stuff. So I think that's a great example of Conway's law in action. But I don't know that um, uh, uh, Werner Vogels or Jeff Bezos or anybody said, let's do a Conway. I, you know, I don't think they did that. I think they literally said, this is how we can get this done. And that's that's how we got the, the kind of pattern. Yes, absolutely. And, and I think the, the it's, it's kind of accomplishing the same goal, just you put different labels on it. But I, really, I think really what you said, right, if you combine the, the Bezos, the mandate that says teams can only communicate through APIs with that two pizza team rule, that basically is the, the recipe for micro products, right? Yeah. Before you say, I need small teams. And I also need those teams to communicate through APIs. And now, even now, you probably won't magically get the best APIs on the planet, but you have a very good starting point. And I think yeah. that really is the main point here that you're, you're not organizing yourself in a way that works against you, but at least organizationally speaking, you put something in place where you say, this is a pretty good starting point. And then you still have to do more stuff, I, I would guess um yeah yeah but you I mean, have a good starting point it's it's yeah it, this nothing is easy in all this right i mean it takes hard work it, take, it takes real work but i think uh the the amazon story the am the jeff bezos mandate story is really an acknowledgement of the power of what mel conway was talking about you know yes. uh, in 1968 and that's this this notion that there are forces there are like matching forces between the organizational structure and the product that you're creating. And when you get committees together to build something, even uh, no matter what it is, they're going to play into each other. And so that leads right to, like you just said, micro products now. I, I love this phrase. I'm, I'm gonna have to dig into this a little bit more. Micro products, uh, if, if that's what you're looking for, then you've got to have the organizational structure and communications patterns, the commitments to doing that very same thing. And I think Amazon is just one pretty public example of making those kinds of commitments to do that work. Yes, that is very true. It's uh, it's only one example. And you see that I think in a lot of places and in particular in places that that have a certain size where the size kind of works against them if they yeah. are not managing it properly. Yeah. And I think for those organizations, it's particularly important to keep an eye on Conway. That's a, okay. that's a good that's a good way to close. Okay, exactly. So I think we've covered it. We talked about micro products, and I, I also like that term a lot, um, even though I stole it, <laughs> but it's still a good term. Nice. Yeah. And we talked about um, what Conway's law is. We talked about the reverse Conway and also how it looks like in practice. Any last words from you, Mike? No, except uh, okay. it's been great and it's been a whirlwind. I love it. Okay. So thanks everybody for watching. I hope this gives you some, some ideas how to get better APIs with Conway's law. Good luck with that. And with that, we're done for today. Thanks a lot and bye everybody. Bye-bye.